Welcome into the Ballpark Digest chat, the podcast as award season continues. And now we look with glee to meeting a couple of puppet masters. I'm Jesse Goldberg Strassler, joined by Kevin Reichardt. Kevin, would you do the honors in introducing the 2021 Ballpark Digest Award for best new logo and branding? Well, this this award was particularly challenging in 2021 because there was such such great branding efforts put forward in the last uh, season. We limited it this season um, because it was already complicated enough. And uh, our choice for the best new logo slash branding, which which is a, a distinction that we'll be discussing, is uh, Burlington Sock Puppets, the former. Burlington, you know, Royals with all with with those connections to North Carolina there. Burlington Sock Puppets. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Let's let's have each of you introduce yourselves. Hey, Kevin. Thanks. Uh, thanks, one, for the honor. And thanks for having us on here. So um, my name is Ryan Kerr. I am uh, the team president and owner of uh, of the Burlington Sock Puppets and uh, and really thrilled about um, receiving this award. So thanks again, guys, and look forward to, to chatting here today. Yeah, and uh, echo that too, Kevin, Jesse, thanks for having us on. I'm Anderson Rathbun. I'm the general manager for the Browns and Sock Puppets and extremely thrilled uh, after the the past 10 months of uh, launching this brand and just seeing it come full circle and, and receiving this is a tremendous honor. So thank you guys. Now, now to, to, for those who may not know Ryan, Ryan's an award winner in the past, uh, executive of the year back in the uh, Daytona days. Yeah, and, uh, I haven't lost your mailing address. It seems like you still keep getting all these uh, these things that I keep sending you. You keep giving us some awards. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. And and Daytona, you you uh, you were a pretty strong presence. You know, brought in Bob Ross painting and one of the other things of the ballpark. A lot of a lot of community stuff, and that's that's why uh, you earned it back then. And now you're you're in the newly reconstituted Appalachian League, now summer collegiate, and uh, with with the sock puppets. So, so why don't you fill us in a little bit on how you made the transition into the Appy League, and, and then we'll discuss the specifics of the branding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, heading into the, the 2020 season, um, around the winter meetings in 2019, heading into 2020, um, started to have like preliminary conversations with Miles Wolf, who really gave me my start in, um, in all baseball when I worked in Burlington from 2011 through 2016, um, working my way up to the general manager. And, and Miles and I were starting to talk about kind of, you know, with 2020 and some of the impending changes with minor league baseball, kind of how they're planning to reimagine Burlington and, and the Appalachian League as a whole. And um, the Appalachian League kind of has always held like a really uh, tight part of my, my heart and like been really uh, close to it. It's my first, first official job. Um, um, was there and graduated from Elon University 20 minutes or so from Burlington and um, my wife and I had kind of started to think about kind of what was going to be next um, as Daytona maybe started to look at you know what our next options were going to be following the 2020 season knew kind of I wanted to be there for three or four years and then transition into something bigger and, and hopefully better and, and you know bigger and better actually maybe meant a little bit smaller in this case but maybe in a little bit larger capacity um, and Miles and I got started to talking and and he said I'd be interested in actually selling the club to you um, because I think you'd be a great stalwart for kind of what baseball has been in Burlington for the past 35 years and have the energy enthusiasm to maybe reimagine what baseball in Burlington could look like for the next 35 years and um, so yeah became the dumbest person in the world as Miles is the smartest um, as he sold a team you know on March 2nd of 2020 and I buy a team uh, on March 2nd of 2020 and then COVID hits and we um, we had already relocated Anderson who had been down with us in Daytona and then Thomas who had also been in Daytona um, up to to Burlington and we had aspirations of you know finishing out our 2020 season but anticipating that change was on the horizon and, and that for us was then spark you know all the new and exciting things that are, is where we're at today but you know we were really excited um, with our partnership with Kansas City I mean that was always one of our greatest relationships that I've seen across the board is the Royals are, are top notch in terms of the way that they work with their affiliates till the till the end of the day they were saying we're going to be the one team in the Appalachian League even if there's nine other teams that uh, don't want to come back we will be there Dayton Moore and JJ 
AJ Pacol and that whole staff uh, continue to talk really highly about Burlington and continue to, to really be connected even to this day as we had JJ's son Ryan with us last year uh, in Burlington. But yeah, what, what it led to then was the ability to own our unique identity and you know to continue to grow and, and build that brand attachment locally. And, and that's what we've been able to do. And, and a real testament, I think, to Anderson and Thomas for what they've done. And you know, I, it seems like just yesterday we were driving up to Pulaski, Virginia for the first ever Appalachian League meetings. Uh, Thomas was driving, gets pulled over, gets a ticket, obviously, because we can't have nice things. And then on the way back, we're sitting in a CC's pizzeria after, you know, 72 hours of, of some drinking, some meeting a lot of people, and we're starting to think about kind of what's next. And that's really where the idea started to flow was, you know, in, in early March of 2020. And then, you know, as we got to, to be sitting around in our house for the next six or seven months, uh, we got to do a ton of Zoom calls and, uh, and really got to pay a lot of attention to, to what the future and what the brand was going to look like in 2021 and beyond. Who is the first person to suggest sock puppets? You're looking at them. Yep. So I'm just happy that you're still looking at Anderson. When uh, <laughs> the, the first time that I, I mentioned sock puppets, uh, there were immediate reservations. And the, I think the words like, I will never work. I will never be the general manager for the sock puppets. I, I do not want to be a part of this. And he continued to get outvoted by myself and, and Thomas along the way. You know, if freezing, if freezing cold takes had uh, transcript transcripts of our conversations, I would have been plastered. I'm going to be, I would have been plastered all over when this is actually released. Yeah. Anderson, what were you fighting for? Uh, it's not that I was fighting against sock puppets per se. I just was, I just wasn't hundred percent sold on it initially. And uh, I thought, uh, I thought that there was, you know, some other ambiguous option out there that we could take a look at. And as we kept going through the options, just none of them made as much sense as the sock puppets. But yeah, when sock puppets was first was first uh, uh, thought of by Ryan, we were actually so during 2020 we had no season. Thomas and I, in order to you know stay here and keep the ballpark activated, we worked out every single weekend from June 5th all the way to the beginning of November, running high school showcase tournaments. And I was up in the press box. Ryan and Thomas were down, downstairs on the field working on the field, and I come down after a game, and Ryan's like, "Well, what about sock puppets?" And I literally just like this is a joke. You know, if, if we're the, actually the sock puppets, you have to find yourself a new GM. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, here we are a year and a half later, I'm, you're still looking at me. So I don't know how I'm not fired or how I, for some reason, thank God I didn't quit, but yeah. Take me through that period of time between Ryan, you first suggesting it to the official release of the team name and brand. Yeah. So I think like the, um, the first thing that we did was we, we set up Zoom meetings with just about everybody. Uh, it was great, I think, because nobody was Zoom burnt out yet at this point. Uh, you know, in the middle of, of 2020, people were happy to get on calls with us. And we sat down with, you know, community stakeholders, city managers, county managers, business leaders, new people into Alamance County, you know, people that have grown up in Alamance County, just trying to understand, you know, I had been there, went to school there, understood the history, but really wanted to hear it from so many different perspectives. And a lot of things kept coming back to textiles, hosiery capital of the South, um, but like wanted to be like uniquely different and like wanted to be a little bit um, like edgy in terms of like building its own unique identity. Burlington, where we're stationed in the country, uh, in North Carolina is right in between Durham, Greensboro, so Raleigh on one side, Raleigh, Durham, and then Greensboro on the other, and really kind of is the connection between those two. So you have a lot of people that live in Burlington that maybe have somebody that works in Greensboro, Winston, and then another part of their family that live, works on the other side. And Burlington's like this growing metropolis that's continued to um, like grow from where I saw it five years ago to where it is today. I can't even like recognize it, but like really wants and fights for its own identity. And people that live in Burlington and Alamance County are like really proud to be from there. And so, right, having, you know, an identity attached to the Indians and the Royals for 36 years is obviously great from brand recognition, but this was really seen, I think, locally as an opportunity to like have our own unique identity, um, not just from the team perspective, but from, you know, even the city management and, and the county as a whole. And so everybody was really on board with this process. And I remember there, we sat there and, um, it was the head of community relations for uh, the city of Burlington. And we we're talking with her and she said, I just want to be shocked. 
And I said, well, what if you want to be socked? And so it kind of led to being like sockingly different rather than shockingly different. Um, and I got off that call. I said to Anderson, we're going to like, what do you think about the sock puppets? I was like, that's where we're going to end up as like, I can guarantee it right now. And probably about then like a month or so later, we, um, we worked a deal with Studio Simon and Dan came on board and we kind of redid the whole thing. We talked with a lot of the similar people, but wanted Dan to hear it as well. And I mean, it must've been like a week. Dan wanted to do a month or two of these different conversations, which we ended up doing. But a week in, he, he calls myself, Anderson and Thomas. And uh, it was the moment I had been waiting for. And he said, listen, I never do this. Um, but like, I think I might have something. I just kind of want to see like your guys thoughts on it and maybe could guide some of our conversation from there on. And I pinged Anderson. I said, here it is. And unprompted, he, uh, he says, what do you guys think about the Burlington sock puppets? Had come up with it completely on his own as well. And so like when the two of us both had it, it was like, that was kind of the defining moment. I was like, yeah, there's something here. And then Dan did an incredible job of kind of bringing it to life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of part of what got the attention. Of course, is is that's really a slick logo, you know, mm -hmm. to begin with. You know, everyone does logos these days, it seems. But this one really stands out with with the personality, which is kind of hard to do. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he brought a sock puppet to life, and yeah. I think what's actually really great and why there's two socks, and we can talk a little bit about this, is like there was an internal divide. I mean, that's the real reason that there's two, two socks is initially, you know, there was a lot of different logos going back and forth. And one of us preferred cool sock and one of us preferred, you know, uh, stir up guy. And as we started to go forth, it was like, no, we need to incorporate both of them as, you know, we look at something sockingly different. We want to have stir up guy, which Anderson endorsed and would take to the grave. Um, <laughs> Versus cool guy, which Thomas and I really were, were big advocates for. Um, and combining those two elements, I think, really combined all those different personalities. And when you think about like sock puppets, like originally the mindset that I had when I was thinking of sock puppets was like creating all these different characters, like a Sesame Street sort of vibe. And obviously when you're going through a rebrand process, you want to make sure that there's like depth and layers to it. And we just thought with sock puppets, there were just so many different layers that we could continue to create. Some that like did work out and some that that obviously maybe didn't. I don't know if anybody really wants to be eating out of like, you know, a nachos and a sock that's been shook up or something along <laughs> those lines. But there are things that you can do. And, and if you really kind of test your imagination, which I think we're always willing to do, um, the, the possibilities are like endless. Do they have names or are they simply cool sock and stir up guy? Cool guy and stir up guy. Cool guy and stir up guy. Yeah. As, as, cr as creative and different as the brand is, the I, I love the fact that we don't have names from and our names are just boring as heck. <laughs> Are, are there going to be more? I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the possibility of more. I mean, this is extensible forever. Yeah. So, uh, so one thing that that I'm really passionate about is the the community uh, sock uh, character set that we're having. So, taking Ryan's like Sesame Street, I like to call it Marvel's Avengers because I'm a huge you know Marvel guy. So, this Avenger style character set, um, we're going to release. We we just released our first one in May. So, it's the it was the 250th uh, anniversary of the Battle of Alamance which people down here, it, it, it was, we call it the first confrontation of the American Revolution. Uh, and it took place right here in Alamance County. So we have uh, a Patriot, uh, if you think Mel Gibson the, in the movie, the Patriot style uh, sock, we call it Colonel Al Sockington. So there's a creative name for you. So that was the first uh, character, community character that we released. This next May, we'll be releasing another community character and we're gonna hopefully release one each year moving forward. And we're gonna build this entire, you know, hero style uh, sock. And on top of that, Thomas, uh, who's one of the funniest, driest people you will ever meet, he came up with the celebrity sock line. I'm actually wearing uh, Michael sock That's from the office. Um, he created this uh, celebrity sock line that we'll be releasing on uh, um, every Thanksgiving-ish timeframe. Um, for our merchandise so so we're we're going to be having hundreds of sock, socks here in the in, in the next couple of uh next couple of years i'm a little fascinated by whether it's easter eggs or those little trivial things when it comes to a logo or the alternate logo with colors with tiny little details were there any things that you made sure to sneak in there things that you fine-tuned as you went along well the ryan go ahead 
Yeah, it's ironic because most of us are colorblind that, as you went through this process. But I think um, the thread within the actual lettering of sock puppets was like the, I think the thing that like really stuck out to me as we went through this process. And like kudos to Dan. I mean, he's a true professional and like he dealt with a hundred different requests and revisions for us. I mean, we, we, we like asked him for the world and he continued to deliver. And so I think, yeah, we went through, I mean, he put together 50 different colors for the stirrup itself for like what color was actually going to work with the stirrup and kind of like what our primaries were going to look like. And so, yeah, we went back and forth with a lot of different color sets of kind of like what was going to actually work. Um, we explored, you know, stirrup guy having his hat backwards and all the different kind of things that could potentially go with, you know, initially, um, say uh cool guy he didn't have actually sunglasses on he just had wackier eyes so we had explored like all these different sort of googly eyes and like what was going to be the right one that fit and so yeah all these different different little accessories within the brand continue to be like iterated on throughout the process and yeah like could not be happier with where it settled but yeah each little one the thread in the in the logo itself was something that I thought was like a really, really awesome thing that then it's obviously then materialized onto the jerseys, et cetera. Yeah. And I'd say my favorite Easter egg is, is actually the kind of the, the reasoning behind the cool guy and the stirrup guy. Um, the cool guy, when we were thinking about like socks and wanted the hat backwards and sunglasses, that was Ken Griffey Jr. And he kind of revitalized the new era of baseball and the stirrup sock. That was the traditional old school style of baseball. So, and we thought that kind of resembled of what we were doing here in Burlington was we were honoring the past tremendous history of baseball, going back all the way to the mill, uh, baseball playing days, but we we're also going to have this new fresh look of Burlington baseball. So you had the Ken Griffey revitalized new era of baseball thought, and you also had that old school baseball still right there on the on the on the logo so i love the fact that we have two characters and, and had that little storyline behind it so i'd say that's my favorite easter egg i mean you can learn a lot about a ball player from their socks 100 <laughs> percent. spoken like wrong. someone who hangs out as a broadcaster in clubhouses <laughs> with players correct me if i'm wrong you were the first of the appy rebrands to be revealed right yep, yep that's correct what was that like preparing for your grand reveal Exciting. Uh, we, were, we were like ready for it. We we actually were ready to unveil our uh, our logo at like the end of 2020. So like prior to um, prior to Christmas, and um, frankly, the league just wasn't ready, and they wanted to do this kind of rollout as the entire league. And so yeah, one of our our things was fine. We'll wait, but we better be the first one to announce. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think Anderson like Anderson put together this video that if you you guys have hopefully seen it, I mean it's it's pretty impressive. And I think um, the way that we unveiled it was. You know, we didn't want to drag this unveiling out. We wanted to, you know, explain it, you know, in terms of what this, what, why exactly, how do we settle on the sock puppets? Um, but we wanted to explain it quickly. And then we wanted to just get the brand out there and get the logo and get people thinking about it and asking questions and then ultimately educating people on how we became the sock puppets. Because, yeah, we spent months and months and months not having a name, for example. But yeah, when we were finally able to unveil it, um, yeah, the nine other teams definitely felt like, Oh shit, we got a we got something to to, to, to look after. This is this is gonna be tough to follow. Mike, well, you, yeah. you you kind of did in Danville. Yeah, we 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 uh, we edged it. So I think right in Danville we went a little bit different, right? Like uh, we went very futuristic. Um, you know, we we really leaned into kind of like what the the machinery and like that next level of like robotics looks like in Danville, and really leaned into it. And yeah, frankly, we had a similar path. We didn't want to do something normal. We didn't want to do anything cookie cutter that had even like the similar circular logo. And so, like the Otterbots really did kind of lean into something completely different um, than a sock puppet. But yeah, we were pretty impressed. And yeah, kudos to like Austin up there. I mean, what he put together in the video there, like, yeah, we were really proud of, of him being able to like, not just like, yeah, catch up to the sock puppets, but like, be like, all right, we're right there. Like this Otterbot sock puppets rivalry is gonna be no joke. I wouldn't and say you're right there. Let's let's pump the brakes a little bit, okay? Yeah. I know you got, I know you, you you have a little stake in both here, but let's pump the brakes on the right there. No, but he, both teams are having like, yeah, a ton of fun and, and both are like so connected with the community and both names like make a ton of sense when you think about them. When you hear about them initially, you're like, 
a team is named the sock puppets and the other one's a robotic otter. What, what's, what's going on here? It's like, it's like the level of absurdity is just off the charts, you know, an <laughs> otter bot yet there was so much discussion was in the industry about the otter bots, especially as as people loved it and it's like you know if you had said a year ago boy we're going to be the otter bots and and people are going to love us everyone would have said well what's an otter bot and yet weirdly it, it works when you see the logo yeah it, it definitely works and it actually like we've heard a lot of from people like in the branding industry that are like really intrigued by the concept because not many people have really ever kind of explored like more of that futuristic vibe or thought about even like a community in itself like you're always typically thinking about like what the community has done in the last 100 years rather than like focusing on like maybe what they're going to do for the next 100 years and so like machines and robotics like aren't a huge thing in Danville right now or at least in the past 100 years but it's like where the big emphasis and reimagining um you know Danville right now is heading towards and like that's where a lot of investments going and so it felt feels like you know it has a staying power long term that will allow it to kind of like grow into itself you know year over year if you're like oh yeah that makes sense they have it that's why they have the otter bots here it's like it's just like robotic hub uh of, of southern virginia like oh clearly the otter bots are here transformers with with uh otters not cars that's yep. right who came up with sock squatch uh so Fans. yeah the we we did a we did a mascot voting uh for the, for the name uh and and we had i mean shoot I, I don't even know the number off the top of my head. We had so many. Sock Squatch was obviously the main one that was voted on and won, but the uh, the second one I believe was the Sockness Monster. Um, there was uh, um, Lint E. There was uh, Static E. Uh, a whole bunch of just sock puns, different names. But Sock Squatch, I'm I'm glad that that one won. Um, honestly, initially Loch Ness Monster was was my fan was my vote for fan favorite, but Sock Squatch just just makes perfect sense looking at who this mascot is uh but yeah it was a it was a fan vote um 100 completely so yeah have you seen fans making their own sock puppets and bring them either to games or sharing their photos videos with you yes so at every single game we have a sock puppet station where fans can build their own sock puppet we have all the different accessories that you would potentially need um to make your own sock puppet um and i think that's just like a it's the cool like free you know enhancement to to the ballpark people love it you see people from all ages making these sock puppets it's not just like a kid station we had almost every single i feel like visiting team had players that would come out there and they would be making their own sock puppets um on opening night it's probably something that like i'll just never get this like out of my mind is we set the world record for most ever sock puppets in one place at a certain time uh with a sock puppet giveaway that the socks are actually built local made locally um with wilson brown sock which a a lot of socks are still made locally in Burlington. Um, and so we'd given away 3,000 socks and um, people were walking through like the merchandise line with like socks on their hands, like pulling out their credit card to like give merchandise and like with sock puppets on their hands. And I was like, what is going on in this world? Like a lot of these similar people, maybe locally, were like, what the heck? We're never going to support this sock puppet team. This is so dumb and silly. And then you get them in the ballpark and you get them thinking the same way. And they were like all in and invested immediately. And that opening night like could not have been, people were like, this is sockingly different. Like they walked through the gates and immediately it hit them like, okay, there was some like creative genius behind some of this madness. And like, we're really proud to enter Sockville. Have you two been besieged by other brainstormers who your great idea has prompted their thinking. Like the very first thing I thought of when I saw the name was, oh, you guys have to win a championship and celebrate with gold toe. <laughs> have, have people just been nonstop pitching to you? Oh, you know what else you can do with sex? It, yeah. it, it is literally nonstop. Yeah, and, and it actually is like a lot of different things that you can do. And we, we love the puns. I mean, we're both terrible comedians in what we do, okay. but we like to have fun and we're continuing to stretch the imagination. So yeah, there's no bad idea. And some of them get turned into potentially good ideas at some point. Um, Jim Tomei is like one of the biggest players ever come through Burlington. So having the ability to go like with Jim Tomei has been like a, a pretty big uh, emphasis for us um, in, in the rebrand process. But yeah, the, there really is like 
opportunities are endless for, for the brand itself. Um, yeah. Did you have any players autograph their socks at season's end? That way you could auction them off. We did not. Oh, yeah, we didn't do any with the with the socks at the end, but uh, but that's definitely see. Here we go. More ideas coming. There's no bad idea. All of it because all of our stirrups, our team wore stirrups. That was part of the sock. Good. Obviously, had to wear and they were all made here locally by Wilson Brown Sock Company, the the company that uh, Ryan mentioned. So next year, uh, that'll definitely be a thing, Jesse. So we'll uh, we'll auction them off, and and hopefully a charity that that it, the proceeds go to you you uh, accept. <laughs> Kevin, of, sounds like you're a stirrup guy. <laughs> I love stirrups. Stirrups should be mandatory, man. Either that or striped socks. One of the two. Agreed. I do love the way that the players leaned into it. One of the things that I like just it caught me off guard because it was so quickly they leaned into it was maybe been the third game in and guy hits a double and he pulls out a sock puppet in his back pocket and he literally does it at the at the dugout like you know instead of whatever the thing is and he sock puppeted back and that like became a thing and it just like yeah some of the imagination that some of these baseball players have is like when they're leaning into some of these fun things and making the game fun it really is like amazing what can what can be done and it was pretty neat like i would have never thought of that and that was just third game in they were doing it back in the day in wrestling that was a finishing move for mankind that's right. Yeah. We're still upset that he won't accept our calls. I mean, he ha- the fact that he hasn't come to a, a sock puppet game is shame well, on him. But I mean, on, on, uh, on, on the subject of mankind, one of the greatest things for the city of Burlington, who is who are awesome partners, they we love working with them. They love having us here. They actually got us a gift. They got a cameo of mankind uh, congratulating us on our rebrand with the sock puppets. So he actually had Mr. Sacco and he was doing the uh, and he was congratulating us uh, when we rebranded. So we didn't see that coming. It was awesome, though. Anderson, on the subject of cameos, okay. let's talk about Sakios. Talk about Sakios. Which is another great idea. Yeah. That it was fun researching the story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or only socks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What were your favorite Sakios to record? And are you able to let us know who were your prime Sakio performers? Yeah. So again, I mean, I can't talk enough about how just hilariously funny and dry sense of humor thomas has thomas came up with sakios in the off season he's like how funny would this be i'm see if i where my sock is we did a um, we actually did a one of my favorite sake that we did we did a sakio for a, a, a racing league that uh it's that's up in uh, that's up up in new england they wanted the sakio so we were doing a you know, boogity 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 all that stuff i was the startup guy obviously and and uh thomas was the cool guy but we had to put a pause on our sakios give me a second if i because i have a I have a dog. I have a dog who's promptly named Freddy, uh, <laughs> like Freddy, but with uh, with the threat of a sock who actually got into my stirrup guy. Mm. So uh, we had to put a pause to our sockios for the time being uh, because he put his paws to it. He put his paws to it. Yeah. He's like, uh, you're playing, uh, you're playing too much with sock puppets and not enough with me. So yeah, I was, uh, I, I, it was a fun run with stirrup guy for, and we're going to get him back. We're going to rehabilitate him and, uh, and, and he'll be as good as ever. Anderson, I wanted to ask you about how did your delivery go to New York city? Oh my God. That was so fun. Uh, anticlimactic. First of all, they don't just let anybody with a random cardboard box walk into apartments in New York city. How was I supposed <laughs> to know that? So I had to set it up on a, on a mailbox. So hopefully uh, the person uh, who, who got it, and I don't even know if they're on Twitter because we just picked random on, on the 10, but I told Tom, it's like, well, this is going to be an every year's uh, staple that we're going to do. Tom, you'll be hopefully maybe seeing us go to Montana. I know somebody uh, requested us to go to Montana this year. So maybe we'll go to Montana next year, Texas the year after that, but it's definitely a tradition that we're going to, we're going to make where the, the GM and the AGM of the team are going to go hand deliver uh, at least one package every single Thanksgiving. It will be interesting when it's like somehow expense report, Hawaii, expense report, Bahamas. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be the craziest, it's going to be the craziest, just Bali. <laughs> who, who, who knew that people were going to buy things in Bali and Thomas and I have to go there. You know, it's the craziest thing. Part of the promotion, <laughs> Ryan. I got it. I'm down for it. So let's, let's take a step back a little bit um, and explain to folks about the reason for the rebranding, uh, the big, the big picture how it turned out and, and, and where you're going. Now, obviously the Apple action league is technically not the same as the old one. 
The old one was, was a, a circuit where the teams were totally owned by major league teams, purely developmental kids right out of high school or, or college, depending, you know, entry level. And now it's summer collegiate uh, and kind of targeted toward, toward high end athletes. Yeah. Um, so as, as we entered back into Burlington, we had a lot of conversations with the city manager there who had been really vocal and had invested really heavily into um, the ballpark of, of kind of like what the future looked like. And um, I would say Harden and myself um, really guided a lot of the process with Major League Baseball. We, we talked to them um, as early as April of 2020, trying to understand what exactly MLB kind of had in store for the Appalachian League, right? You'd heard a lot of rumors and a, a lot of potential plans, but there was nothing really that seemed like all that concrete. And um, so we started to, to have that conversation. And I think frankly, over the three or four months leading into kind of what the Appalachian League matured into, um, we played a pretty guiding force into that. And I think they really started to understand and appreciate all that the Appalachian League had to offer, right? Having 10, you know, previous, uh, you know, professional operations that were there, you know, great stadiums, stadiums that have continued to get invested in. I mean, the investment that's been seen in the Appalachian League over the last 10 years or so has been great. When you look at what Pulaski and Johnson City and Greenville has a beautiful ballpark, Elizabethan puts two million into a new clubhouse, what Burlington's done, Danville continues to invest into the ballpark. So there's a lot of excitement within the league. And I think then the central location made it appealing to what MLB could maybe see for like this becoming a developmental league long term. And so I think we kind of took a step back as well. And we tried to understand like, where does the Appalachian League fit in this like one baseball concept that, you know, has been talked about for years. And, you know, we can all force our own agenda of what helps us. But I think what we tried to do was like really look at it pretty, you know, pragmatic and understand like, hey, where do we fit in this grand scheme of things? 10 small Southern towns, all pretty well connected in terms of geographical location. I think great operators in each of these ballparks. Um, and like, what would be providing value to MLB long-term? And I think when we started to then have those conversations, MLB said, you know, this really would be great to be able to centralize some of these top, you know, freshmen and sophomores prior to them typically heading to the Cape because they're going all over the place. It makes it somewhat tough to scout sometimes um, during the summer. And maybe there's some investment then in technology that would help us be able to, you know, scout more efficiently and effectively long-term. And, and that's kind of where we landed on was, you know, we have 10 great ballparks, we have 10 great operators. Um, how can we provide that value to MLB? And then what value can MLB maybe provide to us? And for us, that was continuing to have that attachment to the Major League Baseball brand. I think built, bringing on USA Baseball from like the amateur baseball aspect um, really helped us. And we think that's where it elevates long-term is being able to really identify some of the top players throughout the country. And they can then get into this kind of pipeline and, and funnel people all the way as they've already started to and near the high school ranks, you know, with this PDP league all the way to the time that they get to the minor leagues. So, you know, we envision us getting actually a similar level of player. Um, frankly, in 2021, we didn't. I think we had some really, really great players, but I don't know if it was a consistent group of players that we had originally thought that we would get. I mean, great guys, but the, the consistent talent level wasn't quite where we thought it would be. Um, but that's definitely been changed here as the Appalachian League got kind of its first year under the belt. I know a lot of college coaches, right, looked at it and probably wanted to wait and see a little bit. And I mean, we always talk obviously about our fan experience, but obviously one of the most important journeys is that player journey. And Jesse, you obviously know it so well, obviously spending a lot of time in the clubhouse with the guys is, you know, we want guys to have an unbelievable experience when they spend three months in Burlington and they ultimately are long-term advocates and brand ambassadors for the sock puppets and so the fact that they had such a great experience here has went back to a lot of campuses all around the country um, and we've had you know unbelievable amount of coaches and former players that are suggesting guys and then yeah when we're trying to recruit players um, mostly through USA Baseball's um, involvement with the league um, yeah everybody's kind of taking the call and, and already have you know almost an entire team committed to to come here for this this upcoming summer. It's really all about the coaches isn't it you know they really are key as to who goes where under what circumstances um, 
did yeah. any coaches send anyone with with any conditions you know cape cod's notable for tons of conditions but lower the the more entry level leagues with the younger players i find aren't necessarily that way yeah i would say it wasn't something that we noticed a huge uh discrepancy i think every coach sends it with some sort of condition to some degree but i don't think it's the extreme of right you know kumar rocker here you're gonna go here but you're only throwing eight innings and if you end up throwing an inning with over six pitches you're gonna have to get pulled right like yeah yeah it, it is amazing uh, as to the conditions that are that are placed in some of these and cape cod's notable for that yep. you know and 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 that's fine. Um, but you know, the, the way, the way to learn how to play baseball is to go out and play baseball at the end of the day. You're preaching, you're preaching right there. So every team rebranded, um, no one, I, I think went to the extent you guys did. Um, but there were some, there was some pretty strong branding across the league. You know, I, I think overall, um, I, I don't think there's a clunker among the group. Um, and there were some other surprises. I kind of like state liners, to be totally honest. I, I know it's not the most glamorous of names, but kind of sums up that market in a nutshell. Yeah, um, it really does. It's, it's not sexy, but right, no. it gets, it's 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 a really well, Bristol. Nice so it's not sexy to begin with. <laughs> Sorry, Bristol, but it's a name that perfectly fit. Yeah. yeah, they did a great job with that, and I know they were really proud. That was that was like one of the. I think that was probably like the second uh one in the league that was like easily decided upon they knew right away that that's what they wanted to end up being yep so now what happens now um besides you know the the player recruitment what 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 do you do in a year or two um could the league expand for instance um could we see some teams come in and out yeah, I could see expansion um, becoming a reality at some point I think right um really having a strong year or two um, to really stabilize feels really important here. Um, we were able to get everything off the ground here in year one. With year one comes a lot of new challenges, especially when you factor in COVID and, you know, let an ever evolving what was June 1st even going to look like um, in all of our different markets. How did that impact, you know, from getting, you know, amateur and college athletes who then came from a, a wide array of different, you know, mandates or different policies based on just their universities alone to then come into the league. And that's going to kind of maybe be the same again for this year unfortunately but um but yeah i think stabilizing making sure we have a great year we just hired um in the league casey fay who is heading up really all of the player development um in the league uh former kansas city royals scout um really has i think an unbelievable pulse of the players the coaches, the communities, like just sees everything really, really well. Um, I think that will allow us to really grow the league in the way that we think that the league can grow. Um, and then, yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, uh, expansion is, is definitely, you know, to be taken off the table. I think, you know, long-term like that maybe is the goal if, if we can prove to be the, the premier summer league for, for freshmen in colleges or freshmen and sophomores. Boy, boy, the world of baseball is getting so specialized, isn't it? You know, it used to be just summer collegiate. Now, now it's like you're pitching the freshmen and Cape Cod is totally pitching, you know, juniors. It's, it's just an amazing progression of the industry. We have the, and we have the top socks. So we're pretty specialized there. We, <laughs> yeah. do, we do think we've specialized a little bit in the sock, uh, sock genre. Well, I mean, after Red Sox, White Sox, and Sox puppet, what, what, what puppets? What, what really is there? Yeah, I'd probably put Sox puppets at the top of those. I, well, yeah. we're, ac we're apologies actual for the no, we're actual Sox. There's no such thing as an SOX. There's no <laughs> such thing as an SOX, but an SOCKS. That's real. That's us. See, really, they should rebrand to imitate you guys and go back yeah. to the old Chicago White Sox with the CKS. That's right. You as, know, an imitation flattery. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have any idea what a Bay Sox was. Uh, well, that's right, the Bay Sox too, and the yeah. Aqua Sox too. I Aqua guess. Sox, yeah. They that's more. That's still not. But once not, again, we're just we're 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 feet and hands above everybody else. Uh, it's not a saying, but it's going to be now. <laughs> Let the Cape Cod know that they need to start wearing capes. That's right. <laughs> you should have a literal representation of your team name and league at all times. 100%. That's right. I had one more question about branding and that's this now that you guys are through it and that you're through a season, what lessons did you learn? And I preface that by saying that 
it's it's so good for team after team, exec after exec, to all pick each other's brains and to learn each step along the way. So my guess is that you guys have fielded a ton of questions by people who are looking at going through the process or in the midst of it or targeting it, uh, it down the line. So what did you learn all, all through this? What did you take away from it? I mean, honestly, Ryan, if I can start off this one, uh, I'll say, you know, throughout my entire life, and I think a lot of people, you know, my age uh, would agree with me, I, I've always been a very self-conscious uh, person. And I think that was like the biggest reason why I was so you know, pausing about the sock puppets was because it was such a different name. And it was such a risk that if it didn't go well, it's going to fall flat on our face It's going to be embarrassing, all that stuff. So I'd say like the biggest lesson that I learned is just, I mean, if you're going to take a risk, like naming yourself the sock puppets, you need to go all in. And I think we did. And I think that's why we now have the buy-in and the fandom that we've got been able to create over these last 10 months. And, and, uh, and, and it's been awesome to see. I mean, Thomas and Ryan, they've been bought in since day one. But, uh, but having them as, you know, helping me get through it, I would say that's the biggest lesson that I learned is when you make these decisions in, in baseball and entertainment, you just have to be all in, uh, regardless of the risk or the potential downside to it. So that, yeah, that's would, the lesson I learned. Yeah, I would echo, right? Just lean in. Uh, you got to own the brand. It, it is your brand. It's what you put yourself on. Um, listen to your community, I think, right? Like getting community and input and involvement i think right you can you can sometimes force things and I, I never felt like even though sock puppets was like such an extreme name like it wasn't forced by any means like within 20 seconds i could convince you of why we named the team the sock puppets and you would be like oh yeah that makes sense and that's awesome um and the second thing is like just have fun like have it's, fun. it's it's just it's supposed to be like an awesome experience i know when i went through it like this was my first ever rebrand having spent 10 plus years in minor league baseball um like had never gone through a rebrand who knows if i'll get to go through another one like it, enjoy it like it's supposed to be like a really exciting experience like have fun all along the way and I, I know dan like simon who has who has done a ton of these like he frankly said like this was one of the most fun rebrands that he went on um mm -hmm. and i think part of it was like we just wanted to have fun all along the way he appreciated that like he knew that you know he might do this you know three or four times a year we do this maybe once every 10 20 30 years um so i think he like really understood that aspect of it and, and took us through the journey really well um and then like all along the way you're gonna have so many different ideas of once you've actually settled on that brand is like continue to like understand how you're going to execute on those. I think sometimes you go through the rebranding process and you have a lot of ideas and then you get to it and then you start to plan out your execution. Whereas a lot of these things take a lot of time, um, you know, whether it's through supply chain issues or whatever, maybe like start thinking about that list from the onset rather than like, Hey, day, 75 comes to the end, we settle on a name, now it's time to start executing, like trying to execute on those things and putting together action plans from day one. Yeah, and on top of that too, I guess if I can add one more, is I Ryan likes to call, I have shiny penny syndrome worse than probably anybody in the world. You know, I, and I get hyper-focused on one certain thing and it's like, that's the thing like I, I'm like, that's the thing I'm doing. That's the thing I want. And uh, when you're going through these rebrands, you know, you're going to have these ideas of what you want to roll out and you don't, don't feel like you have to roll everything out at once. Kind of like what Ryan said. So let alone supply chain issues, but even if you have the ability to roll things out right then and there, think about if it's worth it to roll it out as part of the big rollout or, you know, wait until, you know, we wanted to do, Thomas had the celebrity sock idea before we released the, the name, you know, and I was just like, let's do that right away. That's sweet. That's awesome. And Ryan was kind of in Thomas were like, I mean, we're going to chill and we're going to relax a little bit. You know, we, this isn't a one-year brand. This is, you know, a lifetime brand. So um, that's definitely one thing that I, I, I say I would learn, or I learned as well was hone it in. There's a lot of ideas that you'll have right off the get-go, but don't be, feeling like you need to release all of that right at once you got years and years to to roll this stuff out that's right i'm just now starting to get gray hairs in my uh sorry excuse for facial hair so yeah. there'll be more to come don't worry <laughs> yeah anderson lay off yourself let everybody <laughs> else insult you more than you insult yourself Kevin Reichard, any final thoughts? No, I, I have no final thoughts. We've covered everything that I wanted to cover. You know, I, I, I really, one of the reasons, you know, we, we chose the sock puppets was, was the, the branding part of it, not necessarily the logo specifically. And uh, most teams, you know, as, as you find out, will focus on the name and the logo, come up with those and then, and then not extend it ever. 
and, and honestly, between your social media, which was always witty and, you know, fun and, you know, having, having the sock puppet table at the ballpark, you know, that's the stuff that, that, that really made this a, a sort of natural selection for us. So congratulations guys. Yes. And, thank you again, Kevin. Yeah, really did awesome appreciate honor. it. And yeah. uh, thanks for having us on. So, yeah, this was great. No, this is awesome. Any final been thoughts, fun. Jesse? Yeah, I've been trying to think this entire time how to possibly, Ryan, make a sock Kerr reference, but I just don't think it's going to work. For Anderson Rathbun and Ryan Kerr and the Burlington Sock Puppets, congratulations. And for Kevin Reichard, I'm Jesse Goldberg-Strassler. This has been Ballpark Digest.